Everyone processes grief in their own way, and the art of poetry can oftentimes be a way to navigate through that difficult journey. Narrating Grief Through Poetry is a workshop coming up led by Becky Nakashima Brook from Illuminate Healing Studio and Ryan Collins from the Midwest Writing Center. Uh, Becky and Ryan, welcome back. Thank you both for uh, joining us today to talk about this very important workshop. And now it's coming up November 9th from 10 a.m. until noon. So, Becky, uh, people who want to attend this event, what can they expect? Because obviously, grief is a, a touchy subject for some. Sure, so this is for anyone in the community. You do not have to be a poet. That's what Ryan's here for. Yes, yes. Um, and it's, so beginners can come, um, I would say, probably any age, uh, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. Because we, are, we all need to process grief for Definitely. different reasons. Um, and I think it will be, a great event. Um, it's something that I was thinking about because I've done grieving rituals and as an end-of-life doula and um, just as my work at my studio yeah. of how can we process grief and how can we be supported. And there's many different ways that you can do that, including poetry. So, uh, Ryan, that's where you come in with that the whole poetry aspect yeah. of this. So, <laughs> uh, talk more about poetry and just in itself as an art. It's, it's an oral tradition. I mean, this dates back thousands of years. Sure, yeah. I mean, um, I think a lot of people get a little, like, nervous about poetry or, like, I don't know how I'm to read it people. or anything. Yeah. Hey, don't, yeah. uh, don't be. Um, <laughs> The point is to express. Like I think people forget sometimes, like the opposite of depression is not happiness; it's expression. Sure. Yeah. And so I think the primary thing is just a way to express and try to find language for that, which is often difficult to express. Yeah. Um, and I think you know having the musical component helps too. I'm also Definitely. a musician, and so yeah. kind of bringing, uh, you know, using sound as a way to help like get to and open up and unlock language, especially yeah. around such a difficult subject. Uh, I think makes a lot of sense, and if you've never written poetry or anything like that, that's okay. Um, yeah. If you know how to write, you're good. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll help you from there. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah. it'll be good. Well, I like how you pointed out that this is, poetry is meant to express ourselves, no matter what we're feeling, happiness, sadness, grief, uh, all the like. So you, you said that we don't have to be a poet to, to get involved with this. Not at all. You have to know how to write. So is there sort of a process that we can learn poetry? Is Does it even need to be learned? Um, I think it needs to be felt, I think, more okay, felt. than it needs to be learned. I think thinking about it like homework is probably not a good way to do it. I wouldn't want to do that if <laughs> no. I thought about it like when homework. When you're forced to do it, no one wants to do it. Very <laughs> much, very much that. So, no, I think um, we all have things that we would like to express, I think, yeah. and we maybe have difficulty doing that, and we maybe don't trust uh, our own words to do that a lot. And what I would tell people is you should trust yourself and trust yeah. your language a little bit more. And I'm going to sound a little Obi-Wan Kenobi right now, but <laughs> you should maybe trust the, your feelings a little sure. bit and let the language kind of follow that as opposed to trying to find the language to sort of like fit or play matchy matchy sure. with whatever you're trying to express or get through. Yeah, it sounds like a good way to express yourself, that's for sure. So let's talk about the environment because obviously when we, you know, want to relax and, and let the words flow, we want to relax the environment. So we're at Shoots and Park in Davenport. Mm -hmm. So why this location specifically? So it, I've spoken about it before. It's such a gem. It's this sweet yeah. little place. It's a public park on private property. Okay. And it's a lodge, which to me likes, you know, being in a warm place with a cup of coffee or hot cocoa or hot cider yeah. and sitting with a group of people who mm. are uh, wanting to express themselves, uh, I think will be great. So, um, Shootsons Park is, yeah, this little gem that not no too many people know about, but mm -hmm. um, it's a great place to be together. And then also, hopefully, with the weather, we could maybe go outside for a yeah. hot sound bass outside. That would be ideal. Yeah. Right? Yes, yeah, definitely. and there's even a fire pit there, too. So. so if it's too cold, we can just fire up the fire pit and yeah. just make it that much more relaxing. So uh, you mentioned that you're an end-of-life doula. So how does this mm -hmm. play part in the workshop? Sure. So um, part of being an end-of-life doula is helping people work through those feelings um, and being there as a support. So um, some w one way that I ha do support people is with the sounds. Yeah. So I have some um, some of my instruments here today. But by you know you've all we've all heard like a good song or we've been hummed to by our parents or we find ourselves humming. So there's different ways where a sound helps heal. So I'll be providing um, the sound healing portion part of it, um, and we, we will be doing a grieving ritual, okay. which will help them. Um, they can share if they want to sure. uh, any griefs that they're having, but um, it will at least 
create that circle and that space for them to feel safe and be able to express themselves. And many times when you've been on the show, you've shown us your different instruments. Yeah. So talk about some of the uh, sound bath tools you brought with us today. Sure. So this is a steel drum. And the nice thing about this is it has, you know, deeper sounds. Oh, yeah. And then you can play it to it as higher sounds. Okay. So if you want to so kind of play with it. Oh, I need to get close. I forgot. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, the higher sounds. Yeah. So is this meant to soothe us? What, what kind of emotion is this supposed to invoke? Sure. So as I'm, depending, I try to read the room, yeah. and I'll be playing sounds to help lift and release some energy, release some of the, um, the grief, the emotions, help bring that to the surface, but then also help grounding. Okay. So um, this is called a shruti box, and this is a very relaxing tone. It almost sounds like an organ. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's a lot smaller than carrying an organ around with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, yeah, these are very soothing sounds to go along with poetry. So it uh, sounds like you have a good workshop ahead of you coming up uh, in November. So the Navigating Grief Through Poetry Workshop, it's set for Saturday, November 9th at Shootson Park in Davenport. If you want to register, be sure to visit mwcqc.org. Uh, Becky, Ryan, uh, thank you so much for coming, and uh, hopefully it's a good turnout, and uh, it sounds like this could help a lot of people in the Quad yeah. Cities. Thank you, hopefully. Kyle. Right. Yeah, yes, thank you. Of